Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to another Game Maker tutorial. Now, in this tutorial, this is going to be part two to my RPG tutorial series that I'm doing for absolute beginners. So if you've never used Game Maker Studio before, maybe never even heard of it, this is the video for you. I'm going to put a link to part one uh, up in the top so you can go check that out. I'm also going to put a link to my website if you want to check out my other content. I have other tutorial videos, a book, and also a Udemy course on Game Maker Studio as well. But let's get right into the tutorial video. I'm going to run it real quick and show you guys where we left off just in case you forgot even though it was only yesterday. And we had a basic functioning collision system with a player object and some walls and basic movement. So really simple, but that's a good place to start for beginners. So what we're going to do first is we're going to talk about the step event inside of Game Maker. Now in the last video we talked about these different events, the left pressed event, the up pressed event, the right event, and the down event, and now or left. Those are all keyboard events. They're not actually pressed events, but they're keyboard events. Now, uh, one of the things that you should know is that this really isn't the best way to set this up. Because what if you want to pause your game? Well, these events will fire even when your game is paused. And so it's, it's not a super great way to get the game set up. Um, a better way to do it is to use a step event for our character object. Now, the step event fires every single step of the game. That's why it's called the step event. And in our game, our game is currently firing at 30 steps per second or 30 frames per second basically. So now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, you're going to you're going to die because we're going to kit we're going to delete these events that we had for our movement. And we're going to add a new event and we're going to add a step event and just do the normal step. <coughs> Voice cracks. Okay, we're gonna drag over a, an execute an action code into the step event. So whatever's inside of this event will run every single step of the game. And I'm gonna show you how we can add in our movement code into the step event. This is gonna help us organize the game better and organize our code better. So we're gonna do move the player in the step event. So we're going to do we're going to use what's called an if statement inside of game maker. Now we could do something like, you know, before we had physics position x plus equals 4, right? The problem with this is that it's going to do it no matter what. I mean, the player doesn't even have to press anything. Watch. If we run the game in this state like this, the player doesn't have to press any buttons and it's going to automatically move the character over to the right and you have no control over it. So what we want to do is we want to make a condition where it only runs this code under a certain condition. Um, let me close out of this real quick. Okay, so that is called an if condition. And so we're going to do if something, um, you put parentheses right there, if something. Then you have this curly bracket thing like that. And I usually tab this over and put another curly bracket after it. So whatever's inside of these curly brackets right here is going to happen if this right here is true. So let's say if we're pressing the right key on the keyboard, then this will run. If we're not pressing the right key, then it's just going to skip this and pretend like it's not even there. So that's how an if condition works. Now one thing we can do to set this up so that we can use this if condition, um, we need to be able to check if the right key is being pressed. So we're going to do keyboard check. Now this is called a function, so a function also has parentheses after it. So now we've got a lot of different parentheses and brackets going on right here. If you're new to programming, this is going to be a little confusing. One tip, though, is if you click on one, it's going to show you its pair. And every open brace should have a closing brace. And so we click on this one, and it's got its pair. We click on this one right here, and it's got its pair as well. 
we click on this one and it's got its pair and it highlights them in blue and you can see that. So now what we're going to do is we need to tell it what keyboard button we're listening for, right? We've got keyboard check, but we need to tell it which one we're trying to listen for. So we're going to do keyboard check VK right. Now VK just stands for virtual key. So we're checking for the right keyboard um, key. Now what will happen is if we run our game and we press the right key, he'll move to the right. But if we don't press it, he won't. We've got that control that we had before. Only now it's in the step event. And this looks a little bit more confusing, but this is actually better. So move right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do one more. Only this one's going to be checking for up. So we're going to do if keyboard check VK up. And you can see I've got all my parentheses, this pair right here and this pair right here that surrounds the key that we're checking for. Do a curly bracket. I'm going to hit enter twice and do another curly bracket. So we've got this pair right here. Make sure you've got your pairs. And then inside of here, we're going to do PHY position Y minus equals four. Now you'll remember from the last video that um, the X position is for horizontal and the Y position is for vertical. Now what we're going to do, and we're going to name this, I'm going to give it a comment, move up. Now I'm going to do a mini challenge. I do that in this series because it's good for beginners when they're just starting to step out and do this on their own. So I want you to create two more if statements down here. One for moving left, move left, and then one more for move down. So I'm going to have you uh, pause the video right now and do this mini challenge. Okay, great job. Uh, now I'm going to show you how to do it just in case you got lost or had issues, ran into something with your game. We're going to do if parentheses keyboard check parentheses VK left because we're doing left this time. Make sure you get all your parentheses. They've got their pairs. Each one has its pair. There's two here because there's one here and one here. Then we'll do our curly brackets. PHY position x minus equals 4. Now we're going to do down. If keyboard check vk down. Physics position y plus equals 4 for down. Now, I know that a lot of you, I'm going to just put this out right now. I know that a lot of you are going to ask how you can use the ASDW keys. Now, if you want to do that, it's possible. You can just change VK right. So get rid of VK right, but you've still got your parentheses that you had. Put it, make sure it's inside of those parentheses and do ORD parentheses. And we're going to do two single quotes inside of here single quotes and then inside of those single quotes you're going to do a D. So you can see we've got a lot of parentheses now we've got three sets here. Make sure they're all paired and then you've got single quotes with a capital D and that will do the D key and then obviously A, S and um, W will be um, all the, it'll be exactly like this but you'll have uh, a, S, and W in there. But I'm going to remove this. I just wanted to show you guys how you can do that because I know people will ask. So we're going to do, I'm going to switch this back to VK right. Okay. And later on, I'll show you how to use both at the same time. Now we're looking good. Um, if we run our game, we have it back to where it was before. We should have the collisions working. We should have basic movement working inside of our game. We can move around. But the, the, the game's kind of strange because it's so small on the screen and we're kind of zoomed clear back out. So we're going to fix that. I'm going to show you guys how to use a view inside of Game Maker to make it follow um, an object that we want it to follow. So come over here on our resource tree and go into the room one resource that we created. And you can see there's a tab here called views. So we're going to go under that tab. And there's some things that we need to check. 
we need to check enable the use of views because we want to tell GameMaker that yes, we want to use views. Then we're going to check visible when room starts. So we actually have a view that is visible. Now there's two dimensions here on the screen that we need to talk about. Um, there's the view in the room and there's the port on the screen and they're completely different things. The view in the room, this is the size of kind of the view of the room. The port on the screen is the size of the window inside of Windows. So we want to make the view in the room small so that it's kind of zoomed in on our character and then the port on the screen big so that it's not a tiny little window on our screen. So we're going to do the view in the room. We're going to do that 320 by 180 and you can see if you turn on this little if you turn off this little grid right here it's actually drawing that view right here and you'll see that it is one fourth the size of our total room. Now for the port on the screen we're gonna we're gonna make it basically three times this size which is 960 by 540 and that is going to be a bigger port on our screen um, if that's too big for your screen, then you can use 640 by 360. But I'm going to use 960 by 540. Now we have the view in the room, but you'll notice if we run our game, it's not actually following the player yet, and so it's kind of awkward. <laughs> so we've got a nice big window. It's zoomed in our on our character, but if our character goes outside the view, we can't see him anymore, and that's going to be really frustrating. So what we need to do is we need to add object following. So right here you can click on that and do follow the player. So let's run the game again now that we have object following. And that should be fixed. And you can see the view follows the object now, but it follows it like exactly on the edge. And that doesn't look very good either. It feels kind of weird to have the view follow on the edge like that. So the way you can fix that is there's a horizontal border, which is just a border inside of the view that starts moving the view when the player touches that border. So we're actually just going to do exactly half of our view size. So our view size is 320. We're going to do 160. And then our view height is 180. We're going to do 90. So doing exactly half of our view size when we run the game. Oh, by the way, I'm running the game by hitting F5. It's a shortcut key. Now our view is nice and zoomed in on our character. And this makes it so that the person playing the game can't see the entire level all at once. You know, it would be really annoying if in Mario you could see the entire level all at once. You don't want to see that. You only want to see some of it. So creating this view gives us, you know, this better view of our game. So there you go. You've got a view. You've got a better movement system using the step event inside of GameMaker. You learned about if statements and you also learned about the basic keyboard check functions. So we're going to talk more about those, but in the next video, which I'm going to probably be releasing tomorrow, we're actually going to start adding some sprites to this RPG so that it, it, we can bring it to life. Because right now it's just these squares, it's kind of boring. So I've prepared some sprites already ahead of time that I'm going to give you guys and you can incorporate them into the game. I'll show you how to animate your character and kind of bring it to life with these images. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. If so, be sure and like it and share it on Twitter, and I will talk to you guys later.